Hello and welcome to this presentation about automatic differentiation or AutoGrad in short. AutoGrad is the backbone of any machine learning system, but you can apply it whenever you need gradients for many variables. This video is based on a talk at TU Wien from some time ago and it is my first YouTube video, so please bear with me. So, uh, let's go to the overview. We will uh, go only very briefly into deep neural networks, uh, mainly to set the scene for us. Then we will focus on automatic differentiation and how it works. And finally, I will show a short Python demo. I've also implemented a C++ neural network that uh, I will link in the description. Right, neural networks. Basically, neural networks are functions with learnable parameters. They try to map the input to the output as closely as possible. And they do this by trying to learn these parameters to, to fit a certain target. For simplicity, our input, output, and target will be just vectors. Here you can see a neuron. A neuron consists of a, uh, some weights, which are multiplied uh, by the uh, input um, and then summed up. Then you add a bias and you apply the transfer function. This part you can write as a dot product of the weight vector times the input vector, plus the bias and the transfer function. The transfer function, there are several options for that, um, but we will go not into the details. There is a lot of information in the internet for, uh, on that. So here you can see a fully connected neural network. Uh, you see the weights in here. Uh, we can write them in as a matrix, which multiplies the input vector. We then add the bias vector and we apply the transfer function pointwise. Since we have several layers, we have to do this several times. So here you can see the same network but I've put the variables into the signature of the net function. We want to change these weights and biases in a way uh, so that the input optimally maps to the target. We do, do this optimization by minimizing a cost function using gradient descent. And I will uh, go first into the gradient descent, which you probably know from some math lectures. So basically, um, we try to find the minimum of a function. Uh, here, this f represents my cost function. If we are on the left side, we look at the gradient, so we look at the derivative and we go to the right, or uh, if we are here, we would go to the left. One drawback of this is that uh, if you use uh, this method, you will only find a, a local minimum, uh, or you might not find the global minimum in here, depending on the shape of, of this function. Um, this is a typical problem for machine learning and uh, again there is a lot of material on the internet on how to avoid or make it better and i will not go into that so what about the cost function here we see a simple example of a cost function this is the mean square error you see we have the output of the network here we subtract the target we take the power and we take the mean uh, this is only one possibility for a uh, loss function depending on on whether you have classification or something else uh, your loss function will change but again uh, we will not go into this because we focus on autograd so right we have the cost function which depends on these parameters and we want to optimize these parameters using gradient descent so we need a gradient uh, several differentiation methods. We have symbolic, which is basically what you get out of Mathematica, but you would get a separate expression for every scalar in this matrix uh, and uh, every scalar in all of these matrices. So this is not very efficient. You could go numeric, which is uh, evaluating this cost function for x and for x plus a small delta and then uh, compute the difference and uh, this gives you an estimate for the gradient at position x. But to do this, we would have to uh, evaluate the network uh, at least two times, and this is also expensive. So what we do is using autograd, which we will explain in the next slides. And I will explain autograd using this simple function. Uh, we also have a starting point, which is x uh, equals 1 and y equals 2. In a way, x and y represent our weights and biases, and we want to compute the gradient for these two so that we can later use it for gradient descent. First, we want to evaluate this function. Obviously, you could do it in your head, but 
we are not in your head we are in a computer and if you want uh, to evaluate this thing in a computer you have to build a tree if you're using python or c++ the python interpreter or the c++ compiler will build this tree for you and um, the evaluation uh, will go from the bottom to the top so we have here a equals 3 which is uh, x plus y and we have a b which is uh, y plus 3 and we have the product and we have the result easy right uh, what about um, what about computing the gradients for x and for y you see we on for every node computing the gradient is relatively simple we have the output of f over here and the gradient uh, with respect to a is just b the a gradient for b with uh, with respect to b is just a and we can compute the gradient locally for every node easily and this is what we will use to compute the gradients uh, for the leaves and uh, if we want to compute the gradient for x we will have to multiply from top to bottom you see the gradient for df over df this is one obviously and uh, when while we descend while we go backwards in our computation we have to multiply all of the gradients this is the chain rule but what about y we have two paths to y and um, again uh, when we go from uh, top to bottom we have to multiply every gradient and once we are at the leaf with we sum all those gradients up and so we do this calculation um, we can compute the local gradient in here uh, actually it's in here so that's the f over the a uh, which is b which equals five and you see we have cached this from the forward pass so we don't have to uh, recalculate uh, the b um, which is also a advantage uh, compared to the symbolic uh, evaluation and in here the derivative of plus is simply one uh, so we go from top we have one times five times one so the gradient in x is five uh, well in here it's again one uh, times five times one plus uh, one times three times one i've written it here and this is eight we want to check this using simple math and we uh, calculate everything and yes we are arrive at the same results so hooray we have found the correct uh, gradient but now i want to give you some intuition why we sum up in y the multiplication of the gradients during the backward pass is the chain rule that is intuitive but what about the summation I'll uh, try to give you some intuition here. However, this is not strictly mathematical. Imagine f would depend on a y left and a y right. Uh, we have the gradients uh, using the chain rule for both y left and y right. But now, when we walk into y, uh, the direction of y left, y right is changed at the same time. We take one step uh, on y left adding something to the uh, value of the gradient and at the same time y right is also moved also adding something as well so we see we have to add the gradients of y left and y right to get the overall gradient for y that's at least the way i imagine it all this tree building and walking and adding that must be a lot of complex code well no it's surprisingly easy I've managed to implement all that in just 140 lines of Python code. Here is what we want to achieve. We have several variables which will collect the, the gradients and we form an expression f. We can evaluate this expression. After that, we can call differentiate backward and we collect the results in the variables. This is the expression. It is basically a node in this tree. We have the two um, children a and b we store the operation and we store the results this is the caching it is built using the uh, using operator overloading of python which simply calls the constructor evaluation forward first checks whether um, uh, something is in the cache if not then it evaluates the left and right children and it stores uh, the result in the cache and it returns the result by recursion 
We first compute the bottom part of the tree and then we walk up. Finally, there is a reset function and we will come to the differentiate backward function later. But let's first look at those operators. Uh, evaluate forward is uh, pretty straightforward. It just computes the result. Then we have two functions, which is uh, differentiate with respect to A and differentiate uh, with respect to B. In the case of the sum, it's simply one and one. In case of the product, it's simply the other variable. And uh, we call evaluate forward here, but this will uh, just return the cached value. Let's look now at differentiate backward which goes from top to bottom, again recursively. We start with df over uh, df, uh, which is the factor of 1. Then we descend into the left and into the right node. We multiply the factor, which is the chain rule, times the derivative with uh, respect to a, because this is descending into the a node, and we give the uh, parameters. So uh, this will recurse from top to bottom. Along the way, it applies the chain rule, which you can see here. What is left is the variable. This is also the terminal of the recursion. You see in differentiate backward, we simply add up the derivatives. In uh, evaluate forward, we simply return the value of the variable. And uh, then we have a, a function to return the derivative, right? That's it. And here are the kind of expressions that can be evaluated this way. I won't show the results. If you don't trust me that it works, check it yourself. I've only added some more operators in the log function, but you can go further if you want. Here you can uh, see the whole code. And if you want to take a closer look, it is on GitHub. Okay. Now we have seen the Python implementation and we can go to something more complex, C++. Well, not exactly. I will not throw pages of C++ code at you, but we will look a bit more into the details of matrix multiplication. This we have seen before. You have the transfer function phi, you have the weight matrices and uh, you have the bias vectors. This whole network is formulated as a mathematical expression and therefore we can throw autograd at it. You could already extend the Python implementation from before, having arrays and variables and uh, implementing matrix multiplication uh, manually and uh, the result would be correct, but it wouldn't be very efficient. You see, because in matrix multiplications you have many additions and uh, multiplication and the tree would grow uh, very large. I use this, however, to test my more efficient C++ implementation. So the transfer function, it's relatively easy because it's a uh, per element uh, operation, just as the matrix addition or pointwise multiplication. However, matrix multiplication, it is uh, a bit more complicated. For starters, as you can see, the result, which goes out from the top, uh, has different dimensions, or at least it can have different dimensions than the inputs. And uh, accordingly, the gradient which comes uh, in from the top, it has these output dimensions, and the gradient that goes out from the bottom, it has this dimension on the left and this dimension on the right. And uh, it is even a bit more complicated because this node represents more than just one addition or multiplication. It's a whole matrix product, so there are several multiplications and several summations. There is a lot of literature about derivatives of uh, matrices, etc., but at least to me, it was not immediately clear uh, how to apply those. What I've done is to look first into the dot product, uh, then matrix uh, times uh, vector, and then a full matrix times uh, matrix multiplication. It was a tedious process that took me several days. I will not go into the details of it, um, but I'll try to give you some sort of understanding. In the course of uh, deriving autograd for matrices, I changed my mental picture um, of the gradients a bit. I, I started to say that the gradient is flowing in from the top, uh, then this local node does 
its thing, which is the local derivative, and the gradient continues flowing to the left and to the right. We see something similar uh, in the stuff that we had before. Um, gradient is flowing in to this node, continues to this, etc. And uh, the gradient, uh, we have the local derivatives in here, which in case of the matrix is um, the C, which is the stuff coming in from the top, over the A, and we mu multiply it with the gradient uh, that comes from the top. So uh, this is very analogous to what we had before. Um, and uh, sorry for having different variable names, but I will not correct it uh, now anymore. But we still don't know how to derive this gradient for this matrix multiplication. And we don't know how to multiply it because it's not a simple scalar multiplication anymore. And here is the result. We have the gradient for, uh, from the top and um, dc over dA is B transposed. This is a nice symmetry. This is the gradient with respect to A, so it's B. And the gradient with uh, respect to B is A. Again, A transposed. And because of dimensionalities and because of the way that the values inside the matrices are multiplied together, um, in this case, we have to put the B transpose on the right. And in this case, we have to put the B transpose uh, on the left, uh, the A transpose on the left. And but basically, it's a very nice symmetry between what we had before and what we have now. Okay, let me show something else from my uh, neural network Im implementation in C++. Uh, you see, in here, we have lots of fancy functions. We have the transfer functions, we have some slightly more complicated loss functions that are specific to classification, for instance. Um, and they contain a lot of uh, fancy stuff. For instance, this one. I don't uh, remember exactly where I used it, but I'm uh, certain that I needed it and I had a lot of problems with it. Do you see the problem with it? Remember, gradients need to go through all of the nodes, through the fraction and through the exponential. Uh, say x is something around 100, y is something small. So effectively, this becomes e to the power of 100 uh, divided by e to the power of 100. Uh, so this results in 1. However, e to the power of 100 is beyond floating point and can't be computed. So all of this explodes uh, in nonce or uh, infinity or something around. The workaround is simple as neither the result nor the gradient change when we expand the fraction by e to the power of minus x. And um, this is a typical workaround for a numerical problem. And you can find all of those workarounds on the internet, so just keep in mind. Finally, this is a list of problems that I had during implementing the neural network. I had problems with numerical stability, one of which you already saw. There were vanishing gradients, exploding gradients, dying neurons, and I didn't know how to initialize the weights and biases. And actually, all of those problems were interconnected. So I had to fix all of them kind of in a blind way. And here comes the summary. Deep neural networks are just a bunch of matrices and tr transfer functions in the right order. Uh, gradient descent is used for learning, something that actually a skill could, could do. However, uh, the problems are in the details. And uh, implementing a fully connected neural network is actually quite challenging. You can see my implementation on GitHub and uh, I will post a link in the description. Thank you.